good day. Welcome to Mirror Kings TV News. I am Matsu of Barmitorishe and here are the headlines. African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 celebrates excellence in Kigali, Rwanda. Oboyewori tax media practitioners on facts, checking social media reports. Governor Ubasani performs groundbreaking ceremony for new Beni Gwari Road. IG narrates rescue operation as VCS receive kidnapped students. NNPC has no funds to fix old pipelines. British man killed in missile strike in Ukraine. Nigeria archery team triumph in Abidjan. Now the news in details. African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 celebrate excellence in Kigali, Rwanda. On the 16th of August 2024, the inaugural African Women Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 held at the prestigious Onoma Hotel in Kigali, Rwanda. Over the weekend was a resounding success. The groundbreaking event brought together delegates from over 25 African countries to honor and celebrate the achievements of hardworking women from across the continent. The summit, proudly sponsored by Mayor King's Agency Group, saw over 30 Rwandan citizens participate and receive recognition for their outstanding contributions, including a distinguished senator and the First Lady of Rwanda. Ambassador Dr. Temi San O. Lois, CEO of Mayor King's Agency Group and organizer of the event, hailed the summit as a major milestone in promoting women's empowerment and excellence. The pioneering event marked a first for Kigali, Rwanda, and provided a unique opportunity for women from diverse backgrounds to share their experiences, network, and inspire one another. The African Women's Achievers Awards and Summit 2024 is set to become an annual fixture promoting women's empowerment and excellence across Africa. The success of the event is a testament to the dedication and hard work of Ambassador Dr. Timmy San O. Lewis and his team at Mayor King's Agency Group. Plans are already underway for the next year's edition, promising to be even bigger and more impactful. The high point of the event was the establishment of the African Women Achievers Forum, AWAF, an inauguration of the pioneer leadership structure, which saw Professor Dr. Mata Namjebo Tilaho as president of the forum and Ambassador Dr. Nobomi Shigweni as executive secretary alongside country directors at this occasion. Governor Sheriff Oboyewori of Delta State has urged media practitioners to always fact check social media posts before dissemination. Oboyewori said social media was a tool for propagating and acquiring information and it shouldn't be downplayed. He spoke at the second edition of the Delta Social Media Summit organized by the Senior Special Assistant to Delta State Governor on Media, Osai Ovie Success in Asaba. Represented by his Chief of Staff, Prince Johnson Erijo, the governor promised to continue his open door approach to governance, stressing that his administration was determined to improve the living condition of the people, upgrade and build new infrastructure, reach out to the youth, as well as ensure equality and fairness to all. On the summit theme, Annessing the Power of Social Media, Oboyewori was advent of social media as re revolutionized how media people operate in Nigeria. Osai commended Governor Sheriff Oboyewori for giving approval for the summit and its administration's job and wealth creation programs aimed at meaningfully engaging the youths. The event drew participants from different parts of the state who attended to draw some vital lessons on the use of social media its benefits, its implications, if used to pursue a negative agenda. The Kaduna State Governor, Ubasani, performed the groundbreaking for the construction of 
35.6 kilometers road from Bagoma to Gangumi through Uguan, Bari, Idi Lampo, Awaro, Tashan Keji, and Sabun Lai in Beni Gwari local government area on Sunday. Governor Ubasani, in a statement on his verified Facebook, said the groundbreaking ceremony marked the beginning of the restoration of peace and stability to the long suffering and troubled Beniguari local government area. Governor Sani, in the statement, said Beniguari local government is a major gateway to many parts of Nigeria, adding that it is a rich local government area. According to him, his administration has prioritized infrastructure development, especially road infrastructure, adding that good roads enhance economic development and enable security agencies to respond swiftly to emergencies. It said that since assuming office in 2023, he has performed the groundbreaking of 62 roads across Kaduna State, total 817 kilometers. The Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetekun, on Sunday said a notorious kidnap King Payne was killed and two abductors arrested during the operation to rescue 20 medical students in Benue State. The students who are from the University of Marduguri and the University of Jos were traveling to Inugun for the Federation of Catholic Medical and Dental Students Annual Convention, which they were kidnapped on August 15. The abduction generated massive outcry, which made the IG to order the deployment of tactical operatives and assets, including helicopter, drones, and tactical vehicles to ensure the swift rescue of kidnapped students. Speaking while handing over the students to their vice chancellors, Egbete Kun added that the arrested suspects were in custody. He also said, contrary to speculations, the students were rescued without paying any ransom. Egbete Kun added that the efforts of other security agencies and local vigilantes were instrumental in the rescue of the students and other victims. However, the IG vowed to rid the country of criminal elements and bring them to book. Now on the business news. The federal government has declared that the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited does not have the funds required to rebuild old pipelines. The Minister of State for Oil, Petroleum Resources, Oil, Enikin Lukbobiri, stated this at the just concluded Energy and Labor Summit 2024, organized by the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria in Abuja. Lokpo Biri, while speaking about the divestment of international oil companies and the need to ramp up production, emphasized that Nigeria also needs to repair its pipelines, which is said are old, corroded and expired. He noted that even if the country can produce more than 1.7 million barrels of crude oil, the problem is how to evacuate it to the terminal. For the private sector to come into any country to invest, it said that they must have confidence in such a country, stressing that this was lacking in the past 12 years, yet there was no foreign investment in the nation's oil company. The oil minister maintained that the smuggling of oil from Nigeria to other neighboring countries is because the NNPC imports and sales below the landing cost. On the supply of crude to Dangote and other refineries, he expressed fear that this may suffer a setback except production is ramped up. Now on the foreign news. A British national who was working in eastern Ukraine as part of a Reuters news team was killed in a missile strike on a hotel on Saturday. The agency has confirmed. Safety advisor Ryan Evans was one of the six Reuters employees staying at the hotel Sapphire in the city of Kramastok, which is under Ukrainian control but near the front line when it was hit. Ukrainian authorities said the hotel was struck by a Russian missile. Russia has not commented. 
In a statement, a Reuters spokesperson said the agency had been devastated to learn of Mr. Evans' death. It added that two other members of the team had been hospitalized by the strike and that of one of them being treated for serious injuries. The National Police of Ukraine said earlier that the body of a 40-year-old British man was recovered from the rubble of a hotel at 1835 local time, 1635 BST, on Sunday after a 19-hour search. Writing on Telegram, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky sent his condolences to the family and friends of the man killed. Earlier, Reuters released footage showing parts of the hotel completely destroyed by the strike, with firefighters attempting to peek through the rumble. The Ukrainian General Prosecutor's Office wrote in a statement that the hotel had likely been hit with a short range in Skanda M missile. The Russian military has been making slow but steady advances in the east in recent months, with Ukraine's recent offensive into Russia seen as an attempt to draw troops away from the eastern front line. Now on the sports news. The Nigerian Ashri team has once again made the nation proud with a stellar performance at the annual Ashri Championships held from August 18 to 24 in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. Competing for the second time as a team at this prestigious event, Nigeria showcased its prowess in disciplines of baseball, recurve, and compound Ashri, where all medals were won by Team Nigeria. The team comprising talented Ashers from the Ash Archery Club and Zen Archery Club demonstrated exceptional skill and sportsmanship throughout the tournament. Their dedication and hard work paid off as they brought home 10 gold, 2 silver and 4 bronze medals across various categories. Recall that Rotimi Williams, Ola Tayo Oleshinde, Kao Kolom Eyinei and Damilola Sholademi were the team of ashes that began the renaissance of ashery in Nigeria. And after the team shocked the continent by winning two silver medals at their first appearance at the 12th African Ashery Championship in Pretoria, South Africa in 2022. Now a recap on our headlines. African Women Achievers Awards in Summit 2024 celebrate excellence in Kigali, Rwanda. Oboyewo retacks media practitioners on fact-checking social media reports. Governor Ubasani performs groundbreaking ceremony for new Beninguari Road. IG narrates operation as VCS receive kidnapped students. NNPC has no funds to fix old pipelines. British man killed in missile strike in Ukraine. Nigeria Ashri team triumph in Abidjan. That's the news as edited by Emanuela Timiala. I am Matsu Okwemi Thanks for watching.